Hello everyone. Let us learn about uh, how block caching is done in HDFS and what exactly do we meant by high availability. As the definition of Hadoop, it is high availability distributed object oriented platform. So, let us talk about what exactly is high availability, how do or how does HDFS provide high availability. First, let us talk about block caching. We know cache memory consists of the frequently accessed items, but when coming about Hadoop uh, distributed systems, the data is spread across a network. It is there on a distributed system. In such a case, how do we go for caching? Centralized cache management is prevailing in HDFS, which gives the users to specify where it has to maintain caching of the blocks and name node will communicate with the data nodes. As I mentioned in the previous one, name node consists of the metadata, data node consists of the actual business data. The name node will communicate with the data node and it will also tell them whatever blocks you have right now, please cache these blocks, remove these blocks. It gives a communication to them. Say for example, my file is divided into three blocks A, B, C, which are spread across data nodes 1, 2, 3. The name node wants to keep block B on data node 2. So, it will communicate to data node 2 saying, please put the block B in off heap cache memory. Now, centralized cache memory management in HDFS has few advantages. Let us quickly look at them. The first one, explicit pinning of the blocks. This is how it maintains the cache memory, explicit pinning. Just like we pin the frequently accessed WhatsApp groups in our WhatsApp chat, similarly, it tries to pin the blocks which are frequently accessed. So, this is one method, explicit pinning which explicit pinning, it is preventing frequently used data from being evicted from the memory space. This is particularly important when the block size is huge. When the block size is very huge, removing it from the memory, bringing it whenever I need, that will be time consuming. So, we are trying to pin the block. The blocks which are pinned will not be evicted from the data nodes memory. This is one way. Second advantage, because data node caches are managed by the name node, as the name node is containing the metadata, which block is there on what data node, which block is cache, cached into which data node, name node will have all the information. So, whenever the application master has to prepare its execution plan, it can consult the name node to prepare which block is to be accessed, where the block is cached in what data node, where the task is to be scheduled all such execution plan will be easy for the application master. And one such thing what they do is co-locating a task, wherever the cache memory is having a data block, my task if it is scheduled there, I need not go for loading the data again into the memory. So, they go for principle of locality. Then when block has been cached by a data node, clients can use a new principle, zero copy read API. What is this zero copy read API? This is uh, already the block is available in the cache memory of a data node. So, whenever the first time the data node is downloading the block or whenever the block is being loaded into data node, the checksum verification, all these things are already completed. So, next time for the subsequent reads, they need not do this checksum verification and all. Thereby, we are saying saving some performance timing. So, we call this as zero copy read API. Centralized cache can improve overall cluster memory utilization. What happens when I have centralized caching memory? Repeated requests on the data node. Um, what happens with centralized memory access is, say for example, there is a file which is spread across three data nodes and all the data node blocks are frequently accessed. So, everyone will try to put the blocks into the cache memory. 
wherein uh, for the same block there could be multiple copies in the network which is not necessary for us. So what the HDFS configuration suggests is suppose there is a block of a file try to put only these many number of replications rest of the things can be evicted that is a principle wherein say for example there are n replicas of a block you can keep only m number thereby you are vacating n minus m number of locations in the memory. By default HDFS uses the replication factor as 3 which can be increased or which can be reduced right. For every data block there will be 3 replications. And in order to vacate the memory slots, in order to put them in cache memory, in order to identify who are frequently used, who are not frequently used, the HDFS cache management uses least recently used principle. Some of the use cases where I can go for caching, where I can avoid block caching. First one, centralized cache management is useful for files which are accessed very frequently. Say for example, I want to use a low space fact table, I can put it in cache memory. And one more thing, uh, say for example, I want to identify uh, the sales of this year in comparison to last year. So what data is needed to be cached? Maybe the last year data and current year's data. Do I need to have two years back data? definitely not needed. So cache memory, we have to decide which are to be kept, which are to be not. Then similarly, there are certain service license agreements based on which we try to decide which job has high um, work, high priority workload and which jobs are having low priority workload. Suppose there is a job with high priority workload, we will put whatever data that job is needing in the cache memory thereby we are avoiding the high priority workload job is not competing with a low priority job for IO operations to complete. So these are some of the use cases for cache management in HDFS. There is something called as HDFS federation. What exactly is this? This lays foundation for the next topic called high availability. So let us talk about this HDFS federation. As we have seen in the architecture, there are data nodes and name nodes. Name node has the metadata, data node has the actual business data. The name node keeps a reference to every file and block in the file system in memory, which means that on very large clusters with many files, memory becomes the limiting factor for scaling. What exactly do we mean by this? Suppose I have huge number of files which are kept on HDFS. The name node has to contain metadata about all these files and blocks. If the number of files are increasing, the metadata size also increases. So a single name node may not be sufficient to hold the metadata. In such cases, the Hadoop Federation has introduced from 2.x releases as we have to have multiple number of name nodes as the number of files or the data size is increasing, each of which is managing only one particular metadata space. Say for example, if my network is having multiple name nodes and I have huge number of files, one name node might manage a folder with the metadata, the other, man, uh, other name node might manage the metadata of this particular folder. So HDFS federation suggests or gives a provision for having multiple name nodes when the data is keeping on increasing. Now because there are multiple name nodes, are they communicating with each other? Definitely no. When multiple name nodes are there, though all of them are managing same organizational data, they never communicate with each other. So what will happen? In case when they both are not communicating, how do I provide consistency, my, consistency to my data? How do I provide access to the data? All these things. So when they are not communicating with one another, we try to provide a shared memory wherein both the name nodes or multiple name nodes can put their log information. So all the name nodes, though they are not communicating directly with each other, they try to use a common memory area wherein their log records are maintained. 
Now this HDFS federation is very very helpful for us to work with something called as HDFS high availability. Let us discuss this one. What do we mean by high availability? First of all let us see a problem scenario and we try to provide the solution. What exactly is the problem? Say for example the name node what if it fails? Entire metadata is kept in name node. What if the name node is failing? How do I access my data? The name node is a single point of failure. If it is failing, all the clients including the processing jobs cannot read the data, cannot write the data or they cannot even list out the files. Because name node is consisting the metadata, which file is in what location. If that name node stopped responding, you cannot know where the file is existing because of which none of the operations of read, write, listing can never happen. In such an event, the whole Hadoop system will be efficiently out, will be effectively out of service. In such case, what can be done? One option is another new no name node should be brought online. Practically, they tried this one which is taking more than half an hour to one complete day to bring another name node into online operations. Say for example, the new name node cannot, I brought a new name node, but it cannot start serving the client request until it has loaded the previous name nodes space and it has replayed the edit log because it has to come in synchronization and it has received from the data nodes the block reports. Unless this is happening, the new name node, though it is online, it cannot serve the requests. On la large clusters, it was taking more than 30 minutes and they call it as the cold time. And sometimes during maintenance also, I may need to shut down the name node for a while. So in such cases also, we are going to think of an alternative without disturbing the client activities. How do I provide the data continuously available? Now the solution Hadoop 2 has provided is there will be two name nodes which are parallelly maintained. One name node is called as the active name node, the other name node will be called as the standby name node which keeps on taking the updates from the logs which are written in the shared memory area. When I want to maintain a standby name node, there are few architectural issues to be taken care. First one, the name nodes should be sharing a highly available storage area and it is shareable and data nodes should be continuously sending block reports. I have this files, this block, these many copies. So the data node must continuously send those reports to the sh shared memory area wherein name nodes can know about the data blocks. And the clients must also be configured stating another standby node is there in case of primary name node failure, the standby will come into picture. The secondary name node's role is subsumed by the standby. So we can also say standby acts as a secondary name node. And this secondary name node, what it is doing, just like our backup server, it periodically takes the checkpoints and updates its log and status. As I told, both the primary node and secondary node, both of them must be sharing a memory space. This memory space can be implemented in two ways. One is NFS filer, the other one is QJM, stands for Quorum Journal Manager. Most of the time, most implementations will be using the QJM or Quorum Journal Manager. This is a dedicated HDFS, HDFS implementation which will try to provide a highly available edit log and this runs on a group of journal nodes. What exactly is a journal? The day to day activities, it is like a log book wherein we record whatever is happening in the cluster or HDFS that will be recorded into the journal nodes. This QJM is implemented on multiple journal nodes. So the updates will be written on multiple systems. Only if one of the journal node fails, still we have some more copies. Ideally, there will be three journal nodes and we need to write maximum journal nodes that is minimum two of three. So two journal nodes must be written out of three journal nodes wherein the QJM is running. That is how we are ensuring even if one of the system journal node is failing, the other is still available with the log of the records. And if the active name node is failing, 
what the standby is doing it is con contacting the journal node and try to take the log and it will implement that log and is ready for operation what exactly is failover and fencing we talk about failover then we talk about something very interesting called as fencing what exactly is failover the transition from active name node to standby will be managed by something called as a system entity which is called as the failover controller when something failure is happening it will take control of the situation that is how we can justify the name failover controller various implementations are there hdfs uses something called as zookeeper from the hadoop ecosystem each name node automatically runs a lightweight failover controller process and what the failover controller is doing its job is to monitor is the name node working or is it failing is it working or is it failing it keeps on sending some active pulses and whenever the name node is responding it is understood the name node is working otherwise once i stop receiving responses the name node is understood to fail then the failover may also be initiated manually by an administrator not only as a lightweight thread the administrator can also manually run a thread to see as part of routine maintenance whenever he is starting a failover controller that means he is stopping the name node for a while this is called as graceful failover graceful failover and the failover controller automatically arranges to start with the standby in case of ungraceful failover that means the administrator did not stop the name node for maintenance purpose the name node has failed for some reasons in such cases the failed name node has stopped or not we need to check uh, this i can give you a scenario wherein suppose at the name node side the network is bit slow though it is working it may not give you the responses or you may not receive the responses from the name node in such cases the failover controller thinks the name node has actually failed and the control is given to standby but in reality the name node did not actually fail the network on that side has become very slow so the failover controller was not receiving responses in such cases there are chances both the name nodes are in active state in such cases the failover controller has to forcibly stop the assumed failed name node and let the other name node to continue the high availability implementation goes to great lengths wherein it is trying to make sure at any point of time only one name node is serving the client request this method is called as fencing what does fencing mean only one of the name node is serving the client requests a slowed down name node will never try to serve the client requests this ensuring is called as fencing and qjm the name node the qjm allows only name nodes should be writing the log records and previous active name node should not try to write on the qjm and stronger fencing methods are needed when we are working with nfs filer because it's a file system because qjm is not allowing any other thing to write into the journal we prefer qjm than nfs filer and range of fencing mechanisms will start from uh, revoking name nodes access to shared storage directory and disabling the network port what exactly do we mean by this the range of fencing mechanisms fencing mechanism means i want to make sure only at any point of time one name node is writing into the journal manager if at all the slowed down active node is trying to write the qjm will not allow it and client failover what happens if client system has failed in such cases the system can be automatically brought into live status by the administrator controller and the configuration controls can be used in order to bring it back into action thank you